You yes. never think, actually, I shouldn't have said that. No, and people say uh, hard stuff about me all the time, obviously. No, can you, if you let me you answer, an no, I'm going to answer. I am going to answer if we let me answer, of course. Um, and the thing I would say is... <laughs> Asking the British yeah, tax... Hold on, I'll just answer your question, shall I? Yeah, uh, but someone the, in the I'm audience gonna ask you a question. Awesome. If you ask me a question, then it's probably useful if I answer it. Or we Don't can just... You can just chat. Me. Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. In this video, we are going to be watching Katie Hopkins do what she does best and trigger an entire panel of Karens and an entire audience for that matter, by just being brutally honest. This one absolutely cracks me up. And just for some context, the reason for the interview is that she was on some reality TV show, which we will see a few highlights from, where she was being her obnoxious and irreverent self. And whilst this exchange starts out quite cordial and quite normal, as you'll see, as it progresses, she starts to just trigger them more and more and more. So you'll enjoy this one. Stick around for that. Let's get into it. <laughs> So, did you watch it this year? Celebrity Big Brother. Yes. Well, it was the most explosive one ever, partly down to our guest today. Uh, well, who's... Let's just say she ruffled a few feathers, didn't she? I'm not thick, Katie. Are you not? No, I'm really not. In now! In now! In now! In now! I'm not... Blow me one more kiss. Keep on, because you've just done a terrible thing. Get <laughs> red. Out. Don't like fat people. Don't like unemployed people. Don't like people that don't try hard. <laughs> With the amount you earn, I'd find that tricky when you could afford it yourself. Don't, don't be disappointed. Me. Don't start all this. It seems like you've been two-faced to everyone in here. Yeah, from day one. I felt she was playing a game. If you think I'm going to be able to be nice, you've got another thing coming. Well, she went in to Jeers and uh, she came out to Cheers. Please welcome the very controversial Katie Hopkins. I well, it's, it's, yes, well, you've got a mixed reaction coming out. I did, out but I particularly well. like the lady there in the red. And <laughs> <laughs> um, when you went in, it was big booze, wasn't it? Really big booze. Yeah, really big booze. I went in as the most hated uh, celebrity Big Brother candidate ever but in the you history. Did you like that? You <laughs> liked that title. Yeah, I know where in. I am with booze. I know where I am with being hated, kind of the biggest bitch in Britain, most hated woman in Britain. That's the kind of space that I'm used to. I'm used to kind of getting booze from audiences, so I'm all right with that. But did you go in because you don't like being the most hated woman in Britain? You wanted to change that? No, I think I went in because, um, you know, I've been asked for quite a long time. The January series is always, I think, the better one because people are indoors and largely bored at home anyway um, and because there only comes a certain amount of time where you can keep saying no when you recognize lots of people are working very hard out there doing 13 hour night shifts to earn 28 34,000 pounds a year and you're being offered a lot of money to essentially go in a house and sit on your bottom so, so do you go for the money yeah I think for me Ultimately, you can put it to things like, you can say, well, that's the school fees paid for, or that's the university fees paid for, or whatever you want to put it as. And that's, for me, justified leaving my children for four weeks, although obviously leaving them with my husband and my mum and dad. You see, as long as you're honest about that, because I, I hear some people in, in a lot of, um, you know, TV shows going, I don't know why I came in here, and you think... Everybody knows why you went in there. You went in for the money. Yeah, my, my mum loves you just as well. But did you go way. in to win it? <laughs> did you go in to win it? Because the thing that I kept people saying, you were saying, they're playing a game, he's playing a game, she's playing a game, you were playing a game. Surely you were all playing a game. You're playing... You it's, are. It's it a is a game, game and it's important to see it as a game. And it's important as well not to take it too seriously or yourself too seriously. My husband said I should try and see it as the pursuit of happiness. I'm not sure about that. But uh, certainly you should see it as a game. You should recognise that it's not actually that difficult. You should recognise that your life isn't that hard in there. You shouldn't complain all the time. There isn't actually much wrong with you. And that's one of the things the producer said to me afterwards is that I was probably the only candidate that didn't complain, didn't ask to see a doctor ever, didn't need to see the psychiatrist ever, and didn't complain about the way I was being treated. Because frankly, I think the people in there have an easy time of it and should zip it. Do you ever... Oh. <laughs> So with that context in mind and with the obvious fact that 
these ladies look like they have a fair bit of contempt for Katie and that Katie was her usual self not being on her best behavior during this show. Let's now watch the rather uncomfortable moment where one of the panel members confronts Katie about a rather eyebrow raising comment that she made and the way that Katie just flat out refuses to even slightly bend the knee under the weight of the allegations, which by the way, guys, is exactly what you should do. Of, of everything you've said, controversial, and you know you've you know you've upset people yeah. with things you've said. Do you ever regret saying it, or feel you should apologise? No, I don't regret saying anything that I've said because I'd stand by it. And I think in the house, whilst maybe people got to see another side of me or a side of me beyond maybe five minutes on the sofa or two minutes on the radio or 140 characters on Twitter, um, there is still a very hard side to me, a side that says, no, the taxpayer shouldn't be paying for your kid to go to school when you pay four and no, a half thousand pounds on the about... transportation of your horses. Yeah, no, that, that's <clears throat> an opinion that you have, but I'm on about personal attacks, personal opinions. Do you ever think I shouldn't have said that and I should apologise? Uh, give me an example. Well, for instance, when my sister was in Big Brother, you constantly, every day, day in, day out, went on about, I wish she'd put her ugly fat arm away. I wish she'd pick up her very droopy breasts. Um, she probably, she looks like an old person that smells of, she didn't put this politely, but urine. Um, and as a family, that was really, really hard mm. to, and I just thought, can you imagine somebody saying that about your family? <laughs> Look, gentlemen, now that the cat's out of the bag, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Tiege Hanley. Now, gentlemen, I've never had a skincare routine before because, quite frankly, I thought it was only for girls and too complicated for me. And the reason why I love Tiege Hanley is because they have everything you need in one place, which keeps it nice and simple. You got your daily face wash in the morning to wake you up. Your super serum, which locks in moisture and avoids dry skin. Of course, your eye cream, which avoids puffiness and doesn't sting like other lotions do. Your AM moisturizer, which eliminates tightness and dryness and gives a bit of that SPF 20 sun protection, which we need throughout the day. And then of course you repeat at night with your PM moisturizer, which does the business of keeping your skin nice and healthy while you snooze. And then twice a week, you clear out your clogged pores and dead skin cells with our old mate scrub. And the value is literally undeniable, guys, because what you'd normally pay for one moisturizer with T. Shanley, you get the lot. And don't take my word for it, you can go on their website and read over 5,000 five-star reviews. And because T. Shanley is sponsoring this video, if you click the link below, you will get 30% off your first box and a free gift. So fellas or ladies looking to buy a significant man in your life, a very nice gift. Do yourself a favor, hit that link below and start your monthly subscription today. Back to the video. Do you yeah. never think, actually, I shouldn't have said that? No, and people say uh, hard stuff about me all the time, obviously. No, but can my, I just you, if you let me you answer. answer no, I'm going to answer. I am going to answer if we let me answer, of course. Um, and the thing I would say is, you know, there are hard things that are said. I wasn't the biggest fan of your sister no, uh, on, on Step to Big Brother, and I was a massive supporter of Jim Davis, and I suppose as adversaries, you have to pick your sides. Absolutely. And I was but always do you team Jim. You should have looked into. The reason her arm is that fat is because she's had breast cancer and she has lymphedema and she's had a mastectomy. We all and have. And her biggest insecurity in life is that arm that you constantly, day in, day out... And how many times, you know, on. I think I get a lot of comments, for example, every day about maybe I've got a big nose or I look like Princess Anne or a horse face or any of the other and insults they that people want... A terrible no, but people want to throw at me, and I accept those things that people throw at me. But I guess I've always said that, you know, if you put yourself out there on TV, you have to accept that people aren't always going to like you. And you do have choices. I have a choice. I can stay at home and sit on my sofa or I put but myself out that there that and accept some of the comments think, that are coming my way, and I've been that, grateful for those. That talking to a, can a cancer victim and describing her as having dro droopy breasts, is that a constructive criticism? I think, for me, I was oh, Team Jim, and so I was with Jim no, all the way I know, on this, and I didn't like the way she behaved in the house, I didn't like the no, way she you haven't answered my question. Do you Jim. think talk, telling a cancer victim that she's got dro uh, droopy breasts is okay. a constructive 
helpful criticism. I'm not looking to do constructive, helpful so, criticism. I have 400,000 followers on Twitter because some people find so it witty and entertaining. No, no, but I'm not looking for 400,000 followers on Twitter by trading them off. It's and not... yeah, then the reason people read the stuff you write is because you write fairly harsh and direct stuff about no, individuals. So we have to say we, we operate in the enough, same business. I have never picked on someone's breasts because they're a cancer victim. I just think there are other ways to have a go at someone. And I we accept could pick that... on this one item and talk about it for 15 yeah. minutes. No, do, do you, know, but you know what I'd like to ask you on a general level? For, forget, forget. You know, that was a pretty uncomfortable thing to see and listen to, and Katie might want that one back. Maybe not, though. However, the thing that we have to realise about Katie is that she's the courtroom jester. She has been on the front line in the battle against the cancer of political correctness ever since back in the Trump era. And she's been cancelled and had her name dragged through the mud and she's been dragged across the coals and she's been marched through the streets of King's Landing doing a shame ceremony. <laughs> All because she says what she thinks. She refuses to give in to cancel culture and she refuses to censor herself for politically correct authoritarians. And I can't begin to overstate how important people like Katie have been in the battle against this politically correct nonsense that has completely swept our culture over the last 15 years or so. These people would love to suffocate any semblance of individuality and fun and contrarianism. And just for some further context here, I want to show a brief clip from Rob Moore's podcast where he interviewed Katie Hopkins. I need to ask you this. Do you feel like you're misunderstood? <laughs> no, no, I don't feel like I'm misunderstood. I feel like I've always said what I think. I think people have misunderstood what it means to have an opinion. And many people have misunderstood that if you disagree with someone, you have to hate them. And that's a misunderstanding that they have. Whereas I understand that I can say exactly what I think. And as long as I'm not demanding anyone agrees with it, thinks the same as me, I'm not asking to be liked either, but uh, I think that's okay. And that we need to be able to say what we think and disagree and that be okay. I think the misunderstanding is that you have to hate someone that you disagree with. So you're okay if people think, for example, you're a racist? Yeah, I'm okay if people think I'm racist, fattist, uh, sexist. Islamophobic, uh, anti-Christian, anti-Jew, anti-Semitic, all of the names wow, I've been called. Wow, you managed to get them all in there. Well, I've tried to get, I tried to hit every religion. Because <laughs> I've been called all of them. People right. think I am Jewish. Uh, I'm not, wouldn't matter if I was. Mm. Um, so I'm called every label that there is. And I will always say, you know, you have to allow, it's a really important thing, I think, for young people, like with post-it notes, I wish I had them on me. But, um, you have to allow people to put labels on you and allow them to sit there. But does that not upset you if that's not who you think you are? No. So that was a really good interview. I recommend watching the whole thing and also the interview that Katie did with Candace Owens for PragerU if you want to get to know her a little bit better. So to bring it back around, what I'm trying to say is yes, Katie Hopkins has put her foot in it a few times, but when you're that much of a cultural buccaneer, that's going to happen. And I, for one, am not mad about it because I appreciate the fact that the people who give the middle finger to the culture when 95% of people are frozen in fear are gonna make some mistakes. And also anybody who can refer to themselves as horseface on national television has my respect. And now with all that in mind, let's have a look at Katie finish this off by spitting some raw facts and just being brutally honest. Taking absolutely zero prisoners and zero BS from the panel trying to guilt trip her into submission. And by the way, I totally agree with what she's about to say. I think she's being totally morally consistent and congruent. See what you think. Um, I first became aware of you, as many people here will have, on The Apprentice, right? And since then, you have made what seems to be actually quite a successful career on being controversial and saying cruel things sometimes. Was that your game plan, that you were going to be that person? 
No, I think um, increasingly out there nowadays, the world is really a magnolia. You know, everybody sits in this magnolia, vanilla, middle ground of wanting to be liked. And I like to believe that I am some kind of conviction individual. There are things I believe passionately in. I believe passionately, for example, that we need to look after ourselves, look after our weight, make sure that we take personal responsibility. But do you like being called a bully, though? I mean, people call you a bully. Do you like that? I don't think I'm a bully. Uh, some of the things you did say in the House that attract a great deal of publicity. When, uh, at one stage in the house, you referred to uh, Casey Price as thick, you also picked the fight with her about um, the state paying for her son, who yes. is blind and severely disabled, to go to school. Now, yes. the reason why he has to go all the distance to school is because there are no special schools yes, in West, all of this. West Sussex. Yeah, I've just so, spent four weeks with her. Yeah, I know. So, do you think that saying that she should pay. Just before we get into the next clip, guys, don't forget to smash that like button and hit the subscribe if you get value from this content. Back to the clips. For her son's go to school, do you still stand by Absolutely. that? Absolutely. You know, for me, asking the British taxpayer Asking the yeah, British you, tax... But, hold on, I'll just answer your question, shall I? Yeah, uh, but someone the, in the I'm audience gonna ask is you a question. Awesome. If you ask me a question, then it's probably useful if I answer it. Or we Don't can just... You can just chat. me. I'm asking you... Then I'll you're answer your question. If you ask me a question, I'll answer it for you. If you give She's me the a space taxpayer. to do that. But you, you can. stand by I do. As I just said, yes. I thought I was going to explain, but you wouldn't let me. Um, is that if you spend £4,500 a month stabling your horses, two of which cost £150,000 each, allegedly, you know, I don't think you can then look the taxpayer in the eye, some of which only are maybe £30,000 a year, which is still a lot of money, you can't then look them in the eye and say, yes, you should pay for the transportation of my son. I think sometimes when we're queuing for a hospital place, maybe when you can't get an appointment for the doctor the day you need it, when you actually need to get a place in a school that you really want to get to and you can't because there aren't enough taxes to go around, should Katie Price be taking taxpayers' money when she earns what she earns and spends £4,500 on a few old nags in a stable? I say no. You say different, I understand that. Well, I, I also think that by that logic, Katie, pensioners who earn more than a certain amount should just hand back all their money so people who are below the breadline uh, can go to casualty and not clog it up, and people should not be using the National Health Service, even though they may have paid their national insurance and be perfectly entitled to. What you're talking about is some kind of class system or means system that extends right across our social services. Mm -hmm. And I would accept that. I think um, people like myself, I have taken my children out into private schooling. I also obviously pay my taxes, so I pay for their state mm -hmm. school places as well. But I like to think by making those right decisions, I freed up three spaces in state schools for other people that desperately need them. I think people like myself have made those accountable decisions. I'm proud of the decision decisions I make. I believe I do have integrity in the things I say, but I accept that you have a differing view to me. Very well, popular view I have as well. So, <laughs> well, there you go. It. That's great. <laughs> so just on raw charisma alone, Katie Hopkins was way, way ahead in this debate. And when you're as honest as Katie is, then it's actually quite difficult to stump her because she's kind of like Trump in the sense that she doesn't really have a filter. She's married to that fleeting old school style of communication. She's not trying to play rhetorical games or dance around the issue. There's no sophistry going on. She just owns who she is and what she thinks. She says what she means and means what she says. And I mean, I disagree with her ideologically about many things. However, I do see her as a very necessary cultural force. And so guys, check out those interviews with Katie that I recommended before with PragerU and with Rob Moore, both great insights into her as a person. And also you can find me below by clicking those links, social media and all of that wonderful, wonderful stuff. And if you guys would like to subscribe to the channel, you can click right here or watch another video right here. Till next time, I'm Jake. This is Rattlesnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.